Welcome back to Face the Nation. We are having a very uh, animated discussion with our four guests this evening. Uh, Mr. Rusiripal Atenukorn, Mr. Opul Jayasurya, Dr. Pratibha Mahanamaheva and Mr. Maitri Gunaratna. Mr. Jayasurya, I'd like to pick up on the thread that we were, uh, that we were pulling on uh, in the second round. You mentioned several cases. Now, these were, as Mr. Gunaratna mentioned, the instances where this government said they would come in, that they would hold those wrongdoers accountable, but instead we saw wrongdoing happening all over again. Doesn't this series of events, whether it was under this regime or the previous regime or the regime before that, expose a very ugly nexus between business and politics? The answer to your question, I'll relate it with uh, a topic that has been already discussed, that's particularly with regard to the LNG. Now, LNG, we have seen in the media in the recent past, last few days, we have seen that the government is going for procurement uh, for LNG, right? That means the government is going to buy the equipment that is necessary and to set up the plant for the purpose of uh, generating power through LNG, liquid natural gas. Now, I can say with my knowledge that I had with the BOI, there are more than five companies, at least five companies, including very reputed companies, are waiting in the queue. They have made applications from starting on 2008, 2011, 10, uh, 2013, 16, like that. They are willing to invest in Sri Lanka $3,700 million at their own risk. Whether they make a profit or not is their problem. All that we have to decide is at what price we are going to buy the power. Now, I come to what my Mr. Maitrikunas has said, that there are people in the ministry itself, I'm not talking about politicians alone, this is where it has gone wrong. The, we are not talking about the public servants, they are not tickety boo. <coughs> they are not the guardian angels or uh, lily whites. They are the, they are the biggest uh, crooks here. They start and they mislead the politicians also and then they make their money. They are the people who are discouraging these investments to come into this country. All that they need is some piece of land. And they are ready to make the investment and take the risk. Whether they make a profit or not is their problem. Yet now we are now trying to, and not also they are assisted by certain other consultants. I don't want to mention the names. Certain other consultants, they say, my God, LNG is, not the, is the last thing to happen. In India it is happening. In every other country it is happening, but for Sri Lanka it is bad. But if the government is to in make investment and they go for procurement, they are in support of that. Yeah. They are in support of that. Why? They make the bakshis. They make their bucks. That's, a, that's how it happens. That is the sad part of it. So the point is this... Uh, uh, Mr. Gunaratna, yeah. I'm coming to you next. Okay. So you heard what, uh, what Mr. Jaya Surya had to say. Uh, you were formerly chairperson of uh, Lanka Coal. Uh, is this the case? Is, it, is the bureaucracy also corrupt to the same level, if not more, than the, the, the political the, bureau the Sri Lankan bureaucracy, I would say, is the most corrupt, most in inefficient, and they are the people who are holding this country back. If, if with this, this bureaucracy, no political or no government can succeed. Unless you make drastic changes, you bring in private sector people <coughs> into the bureaucracy and get them to run ministries. I have suggested it to the, His Excellency the President long time ago, maybe six months to eight, eight, eight months ago, to bring in private sector CEOs and put them in charge of as secretaries to ministries. Then you can see something moving. Otherwise, with this set of secretaries, this country is doomed. It's Mr. Gunaratna, you say bring in private sector CEOs. Yeah. What guarantee do you have to say that private sector CEOs are pure and clean? No, no, no. I am not talking about the pure part of it. That we, we cannot judge whether who is pure and who is not pure. But what I am saying is if you bring them in, there is new thinking, there, is, there will be new vision and they will try to drive these people as a, for results to gain results. But let me give you an example yeah. of, of instances where people from the private sector have been brought in to bring in new thinking and new vision and to deliver results. Take Sri Lankan Airlines, no. for example, where Sri you brought Sri Lankan in people Airlines, from the private sector. Sri Lanka, but it hasn't delivered. No, 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 no. I mean, Sri Lankan Airlines, what, has, what happened there was 
the prime minister put his friend as the chairman his uh, advice mr charitratva about his brother as the ceo and they, they that was a that was a family affair and once a government comes into power that is one of the that is one of the main main uh, organizations which everyone is eyeing for to become either chairman but or again Alanka. mr gururatha in 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 that context again i come back to what we were talking about earlier with mr jayasuri as well this nexus between business and politics in sri lanka it appears that maybe because we are such a small country and an almost closed society that you can't find uh, anyone to do the job where you won't have a conflict of interest so should no. we be importing private sector no. people from overseas no 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 i i i don't agree with you nadin what i say is there are private sector people here who are willing to come but you need to go and talk to them you need to go and motivate them because moment you tell them that you are going to work for the government no one wants to come because they know what the, how a government organization works but it is it is it is the powers uh, like the like the president or the prime minister who should go and speak to them or call them and ask them to take over of, for the sake of the country if they if they if they want to take this in the proper direction you need to get new private sector people coming in now in singapore this happened in singapore the one of the main reasons for singapore to develop not only the not only the bureaucracy even the even the politicians were m- much more educated and i think in the in the singapore uh, cabinet and singapore parliament there are all highly educated the cabinet is all doctors right so that is why that country is going in the proper direction and today they are paying a bonus to their citizens no bus the country is uh, right, bus drivers and conductors right, in the country right, the, the country is making such amount of money because the country has been run Ms. like a multinational Ms. company mr gunaratna uh, when it comes to running uh, countries like companies that's an But entirely different say, ideological yeah, i don't debate. have much of a candle for the private sector the private sector in sri lanka some companies are as bad as the, the government sector public official why well, mr jasura it's important to remember right. that in but every act of bribery the there is not only a bribe no, taker but also a bribe giver and also he was bringing some sanctions i uh, think I come for to those corrupt people there should be death penalty to be brought in if not this country will never survive or move forward uh, yeah, mr yeah. jasura yeah. <laughs> it's a very serious position that no, you're no, taking no, no, i'd like to come to that give me a second penalty now the coal matter <laughs> i have, I have, have to we have to get to the primary the panelists one 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 please no hold on a second taken. no action taken from the primary Mr. commission Mr. please i'll like, give you plenty of time during the question and answer session but you shouldn't eat into the time of the other speakers sorry uh, dr manam here i'd like to come to you now the gentleman on your left and right are saying that the bureaucracy is corrupt to such an extent that we need to bring in people from the private sector yes. now we don't see this call happening everywhere in the world in some places maybe you could argue that in the us as well they wanted someone from the private sector and they ended up with uh, donald trump uh, which positive or negative for the people of the us to decide but we have processes to, that are put in place independent commissions etc to ensure integrity and to eradicate and to hold those in public service accountable as a member of one of those independent former member of one of those independent commissions do you agree with with what the, what mr jayasuri and mr gunaratna are saying do you really feel that our bureaucracy is that far gone 100% I don't agree because if you want to bring private sector businessmen or even consultants to the public sector the first thing there is a way they appoint our example even public sector appointed you have to follow administrative circulars you have to follow financial regulations they can't take immediate decisions so first thing you liberalize this system other than that anyone who bring from outside to this uh, public sector we can't see a reform because they are also binding by certain type of rules and regulations so first thing even the open economy introduced certain things were highly bureaucratic but other than that the independence is not given for public sector officers because politicians are involved
I'll give several examples if you want to remove these secretaries. Now, former Minister of Public Administration, he made a statement to divine a paper. Immediately he was removed to Ministry of Postal and that place. Why? Freely expressing ideas. So, first thing, you have to remove the political pressure. Other than that, anyone you bring, now former ministry secretary was transport ministry secretary, you know, from a top business person. But even you can't roll this system. So my argument, immediately nothing will happen. First step, you free them from politics because always the minister pressurizes it. But Dr. Manome, how can you free them from politics? That's from what I'm politics? telling. That's what how I'm do you telling. do it? Examples, Japan, even USA. When Obama came to power, what was his slogan? Change, change. I will close down Guantanamo Bay, torch house. But what happened? Nothing. They are public sector. They have a backbone. This country, public sector, running behind the politicians. It should not be like that. That's so because they're dependent the, 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 on these politicians. The, 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 this for is their, the for culture their in this country. So you have to change this. Give uh, them a chance to act freely and independent, Mr. then Tenacorn, bring private sector. Mr. Tenacorn, I'd like to come to you next. Now, you were formerly uh, in the public sector as well. You worked uh, with a state bank. Uh, do you agree with uh, the solutions that are being given? Bring in private sector people or ensure the independence of public sector officials? No, that I, what we observe now is a complete change in the culture of these appointments into the state-owned enterprises and these uh, government-owned places. You know, they have, the people appear to be hand-picked, chosen by the ministers to do their tasks on their behalf. So they are the front, they are the front line. And if they are to be castigated and punished, I think you are punished the wrong person. You are punishing the wrong person. So this is the unfortunate setup here is, you have some people <clears throat> who have been chosen. Now, the wrong man chosen is out. The best example is here. Mr. Maitri Gunaratna. He was chosen, but he was not fit to be there for to fulfill the whims and fancies of some others. So he is out. Those who remain continue to, you know, those who don't stand to support the people who appoint them to do the wrong things, to continue the wrong things, to do something bad for the country, will survive. So, what is it? So, what? No, I, I have two persons here. I was just about to mention. So, Mr. Tenor, what, 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 what is it that needs to change then? How do you fix this? Politi see, we keep this, saying that there is politicization. What this country needs is some honest, truly national minded truly honest a, a polit set of politicians with a commitment. Well, not that's a, a very set of idealistic rogues. view. It's, it sounds very impractical to wait. It sounds like we'll be waiting forever for this mythical honest politician to arise out of the ground or fall from the heavens. What can be done to no. ensure that there is what is what can be done that has not been done already to ensure the independence of public sector? No, the thing is this. Now, we, the things are not moving the same direction the people are beginning to realize the choice in their choice of the wrong people the suffering that they will have to undergo therefore they will have to manifest their thinking they will have to think about their own future and change the patterns it is in the hands of the people no one else who else can change this can you, me alone, can do it? No. No, nothing. 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 Can, I, can, I, can I add? Uh, you, can, you can add to that. We're going for the question and answer round on that note. Uh, Faraz <laughs> Chaturanga, we can start with Faraz. Would you like yeah, to let say. Mr. Maitri Gurunath <coughs> finish his? No, yeah, yeah. Please. Yeah. Please. No, no, Please. Yeah. Now, uh, Nadim, in this present government, His Excellency the President still I don't think or we can't see any kind of corruption charges or him being involved in any corruption matters. The people appointed him 
on the on the on the eighth of January two thousand fifteen to govern this country. But what is happening is there is no governance. Matters are brought to his notice. It is he knows what is happening, but he chooses not to do anything. That is where we are going wrong. But it's still too not too late. It's still not too late for him to start acting. And if he acts from now onwards, this one and a half years is also not too long for him to get his act together and for him to get back on the saddle. Because as, at, at, at the moment, he is out of the saddle. After the February 10th results, the president and the prime minister are out of the saddle. Right? So, what I am saying is Fa this. Faraz, your question or... Uh, Mr. Denikon, I want to ask a question from you. Now, uh, we let's let's go back a bit. Let's, let's, take look, uh, let's take a look at the January elections. The president was appointed by the people. Then we saw the general election. The people did not vote, a, vote in a majority. The people had mixed ideas about the general election. Then we also saw the people who came in through this no majority vote taking hold of the biggest portion of the government and taking hold of the key ministries. Then once again we see now, this time around the local government elections, another party, quite new, not even one year old, taking a landslide victory in all the local governments. They too are calling, you know, they are taking a big upper hand here and they are calling for a general election. Hmm. Are these political parties who are all, you know, entangled in, with each other, reading the ideas of the people wrong? Or wh what is going on? Now, the people didn't vote for the UNP back then. The people this time didn't vote for the local government representative, but they voted looking at the former president's image. And we should, the clear example is the Maharagama incident. Everyone was uh, talking about it. So, they are looking for the candidates now. Yes. Now, are the politicians <laughs> taking this the wrong way or what is happening? It's, it's actually a mess if you take a look at it, isn't it? No, I think the people's verdict has been clear throughout. Only thing, unfortunately, how it manifests in the form of governance or in the formation of a government is the thing that matters. You know, our system is such that the, in the end, when we see the manifestation completes, Something, Something quite different happens. Mm. You know, that is not with the control of the people. Now, you take the example of the presidential election. 62, uh, 6.2 million voted, that is out of an 81% voter uh, voter uh, turnout. To bring in the new government, new governance sector represented by the president, the current incumbent president. And the outvoted president also, don't forget, he got 5.7 million. And the margin between the two was 51.2 and 47.5. So the people at that time, although we say that it was a massive landslide and then this, this way, it was only a big change because the, uh, 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 the government that has been there or rulers that have been there, for more than a decade, were changed. That is what happened. But then the system remained. So after the system, now after the results, the general election took place. What happened? In the general election, the, the, I, I just got down these figures just to uh, refer, run, run through in case it is necessary. Now in the April, August election, only 77% voted and the leading party that got uh, elected with, with 106 seats got was only UNP. 5 million votes. And the other party got 4.7 million. Don't forget that that party, the, lo the losing party or the party that came second, was a combination of Mahindra Rajapaksa and Maitri Palasir It was not a single party. So see the system. We were in a mess right throughout. And what we what happened in local government elections? In the local government election, the voting percentage was still low compared to both these elections. And uh, the the new party led by Mr. Mahinda Rajapaksa got 4.7 million votes. Whereas all the other votes were got by the all the other parties. So this, according to the voting thinking of the people, 
they stand divided in the same way. But the manifestation is different. Mr. Gunratna, uh, your party contested at the local government elections this time. The UNFF contested and if I'm not mistaken, 21 seats across 21. the island. Uh, the, when the election system was changed this time, one of the key points that was mentioned was the female representation. Yeah. It was spoken very heavily. That was the main propaganda line of the pro-election system uh, people, individuals. Now, this time around, after the gen local government elections, we see that the date of this being gazetted is being postponed day by day. Now, it's uh, somewhere around the 20th of March. 20th. Uh, the main thing that they advocated or they promoted throughout is the main thing that they are failing right after the election. Your views? No, Chaturanga, I don't think the UNP who bought this 25% uh, female representation into parliament and made it uh, law in this country ever expected to lose the local government election so badly. Now, having lost the local government election, they are only getting people, uh, they can only get in people to the, uh, to the council through the list. So, when, when a political party has got about 20% of the vote, they have to make sure that they feel 25% of the uh, women candidates through their list into the council. Now, although the UNP bought this in, the 25% of the women they put into their list were not necessarily women activists who are working. They just they just fill their list and as a result of that what has happened is now the the the, the stalwarts or the diehards who had worked for the party for the last maybe five ten years who have been representing the local government for the last three four times now they have lost their wards and they are trying to go in through the national list or the the list the, list. the second list right so now there is a huge problem there. But the party has to act according to the law. The elections commissioner has to see that the 25% is given by whichever party which has got 20% of the vote. Mm. And as a result of that, they are asking for more time. Parties are asking for more time to sort this problem out. And not only that, they are trying to see whether they can pass a law to change this. <laughs> they will only have to go have, pass a law which is retrospective. They can't pass Dr. a lot of change. Now, now, now they, they have to go with go this. Ahead, they have to go and appoint the 25 percent. Dr. Manameva, what usually yeah, happens not is... Not only 20 percent, 20 percent, the law say 20 percent or three seats. Three seats. It's hmm. very clearly say. Now, if I take an example, Kundasale, there is a big issue. Because uh, this Podujana Peramuna got the whole block, block and hangover two seats they got. And now there are another seven seat given for uh, United National yes. Party and then another six seat is there for SLFB. Now all the women candidates must come from those two parties. Those two parties. But they don't have... Now, now, no, no, this, this is the issue I'm, I mean, but don't they come in the proportionately? No, no, they, no, no, no the pro, from the proportional list they have to put them in. Yes. But what happens is this, they now, don't have to build the entire 25%. They are asking for and uh, then the issue the party also must have a freedom. You can't send all five, uh, you know, uh, councillors, uh, uh, female councillors. Yeah, no, I don't think they have to Why send not? five because no, they, no, have no, no, they have to no, they have to send there. only proportionate. No, no, twenty five percent. No, 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 they have to send the twenty five percent. Kundasali Mr. Mr. Jasuri, I'd like to bring uh, your thoughts in on this. Now, this poses a very severe legal dilemma that seems to have been created through this. On the one hand, you've made a commitment to ensure greater. Uh, political representation for women, which is solely needed in Sri Lanka. But now it seems that the government opened the door to women's political representation, showed them, look, here's the door, go through, and just as they were about to go through, they've shut the door in their faces. No, 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 no. What is happening is nothing. What is happening is political parties are finding it uncomfortable. B but b the, 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 the provision for the ladies to go into the council is there. Now, by, by sending the ladies to the council, the problem the political parties are facing is they are hardcore people who have uh, suffered for the party, who has worked for the party, now can't be sent in. Dr. Mahana so Mayla, that is why they want to change this. Usually happens that's in that's the only a political system. issue. That's only a political that's issue. That's only a political issue. Yeah. But I think what should happen at this moment is apply the law. 
Yes, yeah, exactly. apply the law. Apply the law. Don't try to look into see what should have happened oh, and exactly, what should happen. Exactly. Forget all that. Let the law stand. There, <laughs> if, the lo if that is not there, incorporate in the law. Forget it. Yes. Incorporate the go ahead with the law that is there. Precisely. In existence. No, with Miss Jayasuriya talking about the law, I would like to mention one more thing. You know, there is something bigger in the offing very soon. The delimitation in the provincial council, the report is now before the parliament, according to the law. The parliament has to approve it with a two-thirds majority. I do not know whether most of the people are aware if that is not passed in the parliament with the two-thirds majority, what is going to happen? A very serious thing is going to happen. The de further delay of provincial council no. elections? No. The prime minister will appoint a committee hmm. who will decide the matter that has been rejected or not approved in the parliament and that submit that as a report, recommendation as a report to the president. And the president is expected to announce it. Dr. Manu, as law. As Dr. law. This is law. Now, this is what happened. This is what transpired. This, uh, why I say, say this is, the entire, the, even the laws that were passed recently, you know, there have been something sinister in all these things. Unfortunately, not seen properly through by the people who should have seen it. Mr. Jaisuri, earlier we were speaking about the, ne the need for independence in the public sector, for, uh, for public officials, civil servants to, uh, to be more independent and to act with honesty and integrity. All of the legislation, this is something that has been a trend. We were speaking of the of legal reforms in the legal reform agenda. All of the legislation that would increase accountability and mitigate corruption in the public sector and on the part of politicians, legislation like the National Audit Bill, amending the Standing Orders of Parliament, these are all pledges made under the Hundred Day Program. All of that has been put on the back burner while political parties are tinkering. With, uh, with electoral reforms. Not the electoral reforms that the people voted for in January, but because those were reforms to parliamentary, parliamentary elections. They're tinkering with electoral reforms while still having these leftover but very important uh, points from their previous manifestos. What do you have to say about that? What happened was a one-page document was submitted with regard to the provincial councils to the Supreme Court and a 64-page document was tabled in Parliament. Mr. Jaisuri, your, your thoughts on that? <laughs> <laughs> to tell you very frankly, I have not gone into this question. I will, I will only talk of subjects that I have gone into. Yeah. This is not a subject that has gone into because actually <laughs> okay. I am now, I had divorced myself yeah. from these yeah. political issues. Right? <laughs> I am only looking at it from another perspective where we are heading in this country with regard to policy framework and with regard to investments and uh, how this country can be but developed this, with better this legislation we were talking future. about policy consistency before this this legislation um, bringing in the national audit well, i must say this changing in the this standing country, there's too much of politics. having that oversight that's important to have consistent policy Let because that this. will ensure that people we, can't we, change we policy we, we talk of policies yeah, but we don't talk of policy we talk of politics not policies i think so let's would discuss have seen this act so yeah, this, yeah, yeah. this has gone on that's and true. on for so long, every time people meet, get together, and they are talking about constitutional issues, even on the road, even Vatiyamas and the, all the uh, Kulikara, they all talk about constitutional issues, the, the percentage of women in the... This is, these are not issues that concern the people, the future of the country. The future of the country depends on its policies and the, the, how much we can create but, our but, jobs. Okay. But, but right? Mr. Jayasure, if women's political representation, if constitutional affairs, if bringing in a Incre increasing accountability and improving the strength of governance, good governance. If those aren't policy issues, then what are? Good no. governance, yes, of course I stand with that. But not with regard to how much percentage of women should be there in the local council. This is not a matter that concerns me. As far as I even, I don't think even if more women that's are welcome, I wish we had a fine. woman on the panel or if in the. If there are more the, women uh, welcome on the, the uh, local authorities, that. it's welcome. But, but, but that, that is not a be-all and end-all uh, situation. But I need to give an opportunity for Faraz to.
get in no, a few no. questions in this yes. round. So, no, uh, what I'm trying to ask Mr. Jayasuri is now, if, if as you say, the Vatiyamas and the people are concerned, from the information we receive, it's actually the opposite of it. We, we, we feel that from the information we have that the people are not actually aware of the things that are going on. If you're saying it's the other way around, it's great that the people are aware to a certain degree. But Mr. Jayasuri, what I'm trying to ask you is, they should... As you say, if policies in this country are also politics, because that's what the people have made it to be or the politicians have made it to be, then the people should have, they should be speaking about the politics because they go into the places of power and decide the policies that are completely useless to the country altogether. Yeah, may I say the word in single is please. Uh, may Desha Pane Ajirna Vilati. Naturanga, can I add a word? You know, <laughs> that's so in arising from what uh, Mr. Jayasuriya said, you know, now take uh, for me. I don't know about the Vatya Mas. Now, sure. I was worried about one situation. We read in the papers that the president of the country has made a reference to the Supreme Court about the tenure, the constitutional provisions and the powers that he has to remove the Prime Minister. Now, when the people are say talking about the <coughs> about a very serious need to change the form of a government. Prime Minister essentially becomes an important part in that. Definitely. But so, Mr. Tenikon, that's a little contradictory to what you were saying earlier, that the people are essentially divided among... Uh, among uh, no, you, you were talking about the split in the votes. So no, no, division, are a majority of the people calling for that Divisions apart, remove? when issues crop up, you know, all those issues concern the people. We can't say that because it is a constitutional matter, people should not be interested in it. No, I, I totally disagree with it. It's even the Vatiyama will like to know, not the constitutional provision. What I said, said was why, that it why be, the president it is should asking. should not be anathema for somebody to be discussing all these issues. But what I am saying is, we are missing the point. Mm. Every time, <coughs> even in some family gathering, parties, weddings, wherever we go, we are all talking about politics. Part. We have, we have, we have, we have ruptured the, poly, uh, the the social fabric in this country. Now you're clear. Now you're clear, Mr. Jaisal, right? that we I'm, have to I'm move on from talking about verbal diarrhea. There are verbal course. diarrhea of politics in this country. It's clear now. Yes. So, as a result of which, we are losing the values in families. We are losing what we should be concentrating on. So, every time we are talking about women's concentration in the local councils and the provincial councils and elections, general elections. What is this? Come on. Is there nothing else to talk of? The, the, the <coughs> problems that the people are facing in this country, they have to have a earning, a living, the teachers, what they are facing, the students, what they are facing. These are the issues. Let's find solutions. Hmm. The, 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 the bureaucratic issues that we have faced with, that my, Mr. Gunrat has brought up, these are huge problems. I'm not talking about whichever the party that comes into power will be faced with these kind of problems unless we find a solution today. And in that Respect, I suggest that there should be a better discussion amongst all the parties get together. Because whichever the party that comes into power, they are going to be faced with the same public servants who are going to change the color of the tie. And then Dr. Varna Mahiva, before we go in for a, a short commercial break and go to the final round, we're running short of time. Very quickly, do you think that there is a silver bullet kind of solution to, to, to all the problems that have been raised by, by the gentleman? Silver bullet? <laughs> silver ballot is there rather than silver ballot. Silver ballot. I mean, now it's a horrible situation. <coughs> Even bullet you can't conduct uh, no cabinet silver. meetings and the ministers, they don't want to give up their power. And some ministries, I know personally, nothing happening, no work. People are talking, as he said, politics, which will be the next minister. They are waiting to welcome him to get to all these type of things. I mean, now they have to think about very clearly whether this national government is not necessary now. Because there is no necessity for a national government. Still no Mr. Maharam is talking at a different level. He wants to change the regime tomorrow. So I suppose okay, that's another happen. aspect of it. This, talk, this is not going so to happen. This, this might happen. <laughs> Shall I speak? Yeah. Then please, give me more please, time. Please, Dr. Maharam, please. No, yeah. I, I talk my time. <laughs> I will tell whatever to the general public in this country, my views. So <laughs> it's disturbing for others is not a good governance. People talking, they are good governance, but... Freedom of discussion. Please, please yeah, go on. Many, many a time when questions are directed at me, uh, Mr. Uh, no, I, 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 I never disturbed anyone. 
<laughs> Let me explain my views to general Dr. public. Dr. Bharat was waiting silently they will to decide. his turn. <laughs> general public will decide who is right or who is correct. But the panelists cannot uh, please, come please, and forcibly make, tell, make your point tell like that it yeah. is a utopia or any other thing. But please make your point yeah. quickly. You, are, you ask the solution. Yeah. So I have a free time to give the solution. Yeah. yeah. What's the solution? Let's but debate that. Time doesn't wait. Two solutions yeah. are there. Number one, let one party rule this country. If not, this national government is not necessary. There is no necessary. There is no requirement for a national government. There are certain uh, eras where we had a national government. Otherwise, dissolve the parliament and go for election. That's so. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen, for your views in the uh, fourth round. We're going for a short commercial break. We'll wrap up after that. Welcome back to uh, Face the Nation. Uh, we've been having a very animated discussion on uh, the importance of policy and politics and politicization in uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, Mr. Maitri Gunaratna, I'd like to, uh, sorry, Dr. Mahanama here, I'd like to start the uh, final round with you. We were talking about <coughs> solutions. You were saying that, you know, there is no longer a need for a unity government. Do you really feel that the electoral results that have come forward represent that there is no longer a need for a national unity government? And if one party were to form a government without a majority, how, how would that government function? Let's put like this. The unity government fail to serve the people, grassroots people requirements. They were there for two and a half years, but all they failed. So therefore people thought running this system may not the solution. I personally analyzed all these 100 days document, 500 days documents, whatever this is only a talking show. Now, this election was really campaigned by the top leaders, even the president. But whatever the president explained, whatever the president promised, people never believed. So that's why I'm saying, now this is a junction. You decide now. Other than that, how come this unity government run, there is no uh, coherent or even uh, amalgamation in the cabinet? See what the cabinet ministers are saying. Now the one senior cabinet me say, this election result is wrong. This is a correct election result. So what this? We are the election commission. So um, finally my argument is this. Do not interpret several things in several ways. Finally, the country is suffering. You are putting this country into an unnecessary, uncertain position. Don't do that. Uh, Mr. Gurunathna, we were talking about the importance of being the public sector uh, independent. This is something that people have been talking about for a while now. I think almost ever since the CCS, the Ceylon Civil Service, came to an end, the independence of the public sector has been a constant thorn in the side of Sri Lanka. The lack of independence, let's say. You're saying that bringing in people from the private sector will resolve this issue and will help to stem corruption and uh, in the bureaucracy. Is that really the way forward for Sri Lanka? I mean, otherwise, with this same sort of people in the same places, we are going to get the same results. The result is the country is not going forward, the country is going backwards. So if you want to uh, try your luck in taking this forward, you need to get new people coming in with new thinking. If you don't get the new people coming with new thinking, we are not going to go forward. So the choice is this. Are we going to have the same uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, public servants who have contributed the least and go ahead? Or are we going to make a change? Or what I say is at least out of the maybe five, ten minutes of out of ten ministries, put five five to five ministries put people from the private sector and see whether there is any change, see whether there is any kind of uh, improvement. Then at least the people who are in the government sector will have to work and sh show up to the, the, the proper standard. If otherwise, what is going to happen is we are, we are going to get the same result. And, and this country is not going, I am telling you, I have been in the government sector for three years, three years and the public servants are the stumbling blocks for development. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Maitri Gunaratna. Uh, Mr. Rusiri Pala Tenakon, I'd like to come to you. Now, you've been doing this for some time, which is an understatement. You've been at this for decades. You've been trying to uh, advocating for positive changes, uh, being an activist, you've been a, a union leader, you've worked with the state bank, uh, you've also uh, been engaged in politics. In all these, with all these years of experience behind you, with all these experiences behind you, what do you have to say about where we go from here? Immediately, the first thing is we must take the results of the last election as an indication of the people's you know, will as to what should, that there should be some kind of a change because they are, they are voting very clearly shows this. The main, the only change that can happen is you know, the distribution of assignment of functions that happened in the cabinet. Most unprecedented thing that was ever done in the history of politics in this country. That should be reversed back to normal. Highways and uh, higher education being segregated. Central banks and uh, state banks and banking sector coming into Minister of Finance. I mean to make it very short. Starting with that, change the cabinet, entire cabinet. When you change the cabinet, ipso facto, the prime minister and everybody has to be reappointed. That's the law of this country. Do that and we go forward. A very interesting takeaway from there, Mr. Rusri Palatinikon. The law of the country, do that and go forward. Uh, speaking of law, we come to uh, finally Mr. Upul Jayasuriya, President's Council, former chairman of the Board of Investment as well. Mr. Jayasuriya, you were saying that we're talking too much politics now. It's become, uh, there's been indigestion, uh, it's verbal diarrhea. But we were talking earlier about measures like the National Audit Bill, increased women's representation, increased uh, represent political representation for women. These are all solutions that have been put forward to long-standing problems. They've been talking about the problems facing women in this country. Increased representation for women is one of the solutions. We talk about the lack of financial discipline in government. The National Audit Bill is one of the solutions. I'm not saying there's a silver bullet solution for everything, to fix everything, but it appears that we have to continue to talk about the politics and uh, we have to continue to talk about constitutional affairs because simple measures that can be put in to ensure that we have a strong system of governance in this country, no one seems to be interested in, in carrying that forward. Let me comment uh, this way. I will take a little bit of what Mr. Tenakon said and also what Mr. Uh, Maitri Gunnar, who advocated that the private sector should be brought in. I'm not uh, believing that private sector is the panacea for all this, but still, subject to that, I say, uh, let's make the intelligence of this country involved in the process of governance. We have universities. We have top class lecturers and professors whose views are not uh, listened to by the, the rulers. And let's, whatever we do in making policy, uh, evolving policy for the future, get the private sector, get the university people, uh, and make a policy, and a policy that cannot be changed by government to government, which will continue, whilst making use of the opposition also. And for the public sector, for adherence, uh, for good governance, and bring a system where they have to be mandatory and such policies have to be complied with even with regard to procurement even with regard to other uh, issues with regard to uh, uh, even say let's say even ministries sometimes it's like some minister is taking from some part from here and another part from there they don't there's no coherence there like i think uh, now i think the minister of higher education also has some other Highway. highways what is the connection there is no connection here. Okay. I think the Minister of Higher Education should be only higher education. There is so much to think there. For the future of our generation, for the future of our country, higher education should be guided properly. There should be a proper person 
who will be con- confined to higher education only. I'm just giving an example. So likewise, even that kind of policy should come from the sociologists, the, the political scientists, and the other people, um, top class people. Like, as Maitri said, in Singapore, all the cabinet members are uh, doctors, PhD uh, people. So likewise, we are, we are not that we are short of uh, such people in this country. Yeah, Let's nice. get them all involved in this process. Get the private sector also involved in this process and evolve a policy for the future that will not be changed from one party to another party as the governments may change in the future. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Upul Jayasuriya, President's Council. Uh, your uh, final thoughts, I'm sure, echo with, uh, with all of us uh, here in Sri Lanka. Uh, so thank you very much again to you as well. Thank you very much, Dr. Dr. Pratibha Mahana Mahewa, uh, former commissioner of the Sri Lanka Human Rights uh, Commission. Your input has been very valuable uh, today. Uh, thank you also to Mr. Maitri Gunaratna, uh, General Secretary of the United National Freedom Front and Attorney at Law. As always, it's been a pleasure having you on the show and to listen to what you have had to say as well. I'd also like to thank Mr. Rusiripal Atenakon, a senior banker and activist, and I could probably add on an uh, entire list of, uh, of noteworthy achievements. Thank you very much again, Mr. Rusiripal Atenakon, as always, for coming on this show and uh, sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you also to Faraz, Mr. Faraz Shaukat Ali, and Mr. Chaturanga Habuarachi for their insightful questions. I don't want to leave you with a note of doom and gloom. Instead, I'd like to ask you to think about the country that we live in. It really is a very beautiful country, from the scenic waterfalls and mountains and forests of the hill country to the golden beaches of the coast. We really do live in a very beautiful country, very beautiful environment. Are we destined to live in a beautiful country and continue to be ugly people though? I'd like to leave you tonight with a thought from Mahatma Gandhi who said that in order for unity to be real, it must stand the severest of strain without breaking. Will we withstand the strain or will we sink with the ship? Ultimately, it's your republic, so it's up to you, the people. Good night and good luck.